What is going on guys? We are back with another video and this is the Texans Fantasy Rebuild and it's a bit of a voiceover because my audio decided to kill itself but it's only for the first eight minutes and as you know these rebuilds take quite a bit of time so the majority is still um, not BS bullshit mode but the, you know the positive thing here I know what's going to happen. Um, that's actually a really negative thing for you guys. But, of course, we don't have a real option at quarterback. And we're going to put Braxton Miller quarterback. We're the Texans. We are desperate. We don't give a shit about your feelings. 63 overall. Now we're moving on to the trades where we get Miles Jack. Going to be our starting middle linebacker to try to win defensive rookie of the year. Give ourselves a chance. We, we didn't really give up a whole lot for him. Uh, here we're going to trade for Dante Fowler Jr. The ironic part is we end up trading him away because I forgot we don't need him. I was so confused that if we were in a 3-4 or 4-3 and I figured it out. Uh, we trade all this crap for uh, two linemen. Oh shit, I forgot to use um, like real rosters, didn't I? Or did I not? I don't remember, did I? I honestly don't fucking know. <laughs> no, I think I used um, relevant rosters. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But obviously, we trade in a little bit here. Um, yeah, it's refreshing to go back to the old style. Will Fuller and company of draft picks for a first round from the Niners. I think it was a decent trade. Uh, I don't mind Will Fuller, but we didn't need him. Um, we're looking at Sam Shields. Did we sign him? We did sign him. All right, so we signed him. I, like I said in the past rebuild, we, we'll use him. We'll use him one of these days. Um, so we do know for a fact that we are in um, the realistic ones, or realistic ones, the new rosters. Um... Now we're trading for uh, Jawan James, trading our center and other draft picks for him. Decent trade there. I would think it's fair enough. Uh, we're trying the Hopkins at, in the slot or the guy we want to go up in the slot move. I don't know how I feel about that. I really think number one, number two is where you need to go. But one of you guys in the comment section recommended it. So we'll try it out, see how we're doing. Uh, this team, Braxton Miller could come alive and take us to the playoffs year one. We already have a good defense. It just comes down to being lucky. And you know, we've had really good luck with having, um, you know, really bad quarterbacks that are rookies go really well. Like, they just do very well. Um, so the, those rookies, they look all right. Obviously, our biggest need, I think, is cornerback. Quarterback could be a problem if Braxton doesn't develop. But I don't know. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. Draft stories. We're now into week 15, I believe now, uh, Heisman. So uh, not bad, but we don't really need the positions so far. Byron's pretty decent, but we don't really need a quarterback until we know. And uh, we're going to look at the running back as well. And Hambler, Burnus Hambler looks all right. But once again, don't really need a running back. Just looking at that cornerback position. Bickerstaff looking all right. Pretty solid class here. So we're glad that... Uh, the corner class is coming early and often when we really need it. Uh, here we are going into, I believe, the playoffs, which, of course, we are not a part of, which sucks ass. Uh, I don't know why I'm looking at these guys like I'm supposed to know them. We are 7-9, but I believe we actually had a really strong start to the season. Let's take a look if I'm right. And we kind of did. We, uh, what were we, 4-2, 6-2. 6-2, and then just loss after loss. We won one game. Out of the last, what, nine, ten? Something like that. It was really maybe eight, last eight. I don't fucking math. Sorry. I'm sorry. I've failed you. Uh, but pretty good season, honestly, for Braxton at quarterback. Depending on the XP, might be the guy. He might be the guy. Um, not bad from Lamar, I suppose. Uh, Jalen, decent. Uh, I can't really tell if the method worked or not because Jalen had a decent season for his stats. Um, but I guess let, let we'll just call it a... 70-30 decent win. Offensive line wasn't bad at all. Miles Jack didn't have the crazy season, but he was all right. Um, sacks, really bad. We were in the right scheme, too. I think what the problem was, though, is I forgot to change the playbook. So, yeah, we'll call that on me. Probably would have made the playoffs year one if we would have had the right uh, playbook on. But we do need a good draft pick, so I don't really mind. I, I honestly don't, which is coming to my another thought of Man, realistic rebuilds for decent teams is going to be tough. Those teams that are good enough to go like 8-8 eight and eight, but not good enough to win in the playoffs, that's going to be tough for us. Braxton Miller, though, number four for MVP. Like, forget he's a 63 overall quarterback. He's a rookie. Like, with really bad stats, 
added on to it. But when with those award wins, it's going to set up set us up decently for this rebuild. A lot of award wins. I'll tell you that. We won a lot of awards year one, which is kind of surprising because we usually don't do too great year one. I can't tell if it's for me if it's like a little laggy or messed up, but rather rough there, those, uh, those slide transitions. Quick development trade for Braxton. 74 overall, obviously use a little bit of XP during the year. Um, let's get his stats up. Try to turn him into a young RG3. Uh, we're looking at the Super Bowl and uh, don't know who won. Jesus Christ, I can't see from this far away. Lots of uh, players to re-sign. Looking at this list, honestly, none of them are going to get re-signed by us. They're all regressing. And look at him. Well, I was like, what? wait, what? Le'Veon Bell? But, of course, we don't need a running back. And that sucks because this rebuild probably would have went twice as fast if we would have just went with Bell. But as much as it's not a realistic rebuild, we're still going to do the right thing and not sign him. He's expensive. There's no point to go for him. When we have a decent running back, he's decently young. Let's just, you know, chill out and take him. You know, just keep our guy. Let, let Le'Veon go wherever he goes, which I don't remember where. Honestly, I don't remember. Was it Redskins? I honestly don't remember where he went. Lots of cornerbacks to choose from. Bickerstaff is the number one on our board right now, I would like to think. Um, lots of good guys there. Number two overall pick. And then what is the rest? What is the rest? 20th? Not bad. Not bad at all. But we obviously want to trade down which is exactly what we do and now we're gonna trade back no we aren't no we're not we didn't trade down or no we did we traded to seven then we moved down again i believe uh, a bunch of cornerbacks going but that is all right because we didn't really want to take a risk with one of the higher guys knowing we can get someone just as good later bickerstaff normal dev but extremely talented really good player for us there 23 years old a little rough which is all right tolliver what's his dev slow but he's really good it's not a bad pick though because it was a little late so i mean at the end of the day we still got a good player that will probably start for us gonna grab another corner another slow dev but yet again a great player just development traits really not our thing so far in this draft and now we're gonna go with yet another cornerback slow but yet again a great player who can play safety especially since he's 6'4 and then here we grab a guy with rather bad stats, but really good development traits. So very ironic draft. It's been happening to us a lot lately. A little bit of age, though. Uh, it worries me. It worries me about that age just a bit. But obviously, we have to figure out who is going to play where and who is going to play what. Giorgio, the 6'4 um, safety or corner, is probably going to play safety for us. And obviously, we love to do it to ourselves. just like a, a game show. Take a look at the players we miss. That guy... 24 years old superstar is nice but he is really freaking old and then the quarterback we missed is he worth it kind of so we are going on with this team as the year two roster and it looks pretty solid offensive line i mean there's a couple of spots that could get better but i mean we do have a little bit of xp and eh, it's really not on the guys that need to be upgraded braxton miller 82 overall now as our starting quarterback Looking a lot better coming into this next season. Um, lots of rookie, a lot of young talent on the defensive side of the ball, which is all right. We actually do need a new defensive tackle, but we'll be fine with that. Got to make sure we are in a 4-3, though. And then also we did get new kicker punter. Got a rookie and then Patrick Murray. Obviously, opposite order. You know what I'm saying. Kickoff center, that'll fix itself. So, I mean, I'm going to use this XP, and then we'll get on to the regular season, see if there's any rookies that could make our team a little bit better next season. Do we have to re-sign Hopkins, among others? Ooh, we got a couple of guys here that are... Ooh, I don't like that. I don't like some of these names. Uh, fullback can go... Uh, I don't like these names. Really don't. We've got 90-ish mil. Obviously, we're not going to let Hopkins go. If we can keep him, we will. Clowney's making a lot, considering he doesn't even have, like, superstar dev. Nice needs to improve. CJ Fedorowicz, that's a tough one. Shazier needs to be resigned. The offensive line's a little iffy. They're they're young, though, so I don't know. It's tough. We can afford all of them, though, so I don't, I don't know why I'm really worried too much. But at least we got Hopkins back. That's a huge guy that we needed. 
to keep and we did true font five for 70 i think that's a little bit more than he got in real life actually tj cotton going to left guard so that's a move got a guy going to left guard who is going to be superstar dev i believe so that's not bad second round pick looking solid that's you know that's obviously going to factor in our offensive lineman decisions we have draft stories free safety joins the defensive heisman leader Kenny Pringley finished the season with 11 picks this year. So Kenny Pringley, Freddie Powers, and Rayshon Stanford. Rayshon, 5'11", pretty prototypical body, not bad. Pringley, cornerback, that was underwhelming. And then we take a look at Freddie Powers, offensive lineman, really bad. I don't know what the fuck this class is. It's supposed to be so good, and yet that was horrendous. Like, look at the sum of the players here. I'm not seeing a whole lot of talent. Late first round, though, maybe someone we draft. Heading to the playoffs, we know that last season we came very close. Probably should have. We just took a complete 180 from the good and turned it into the bad. This team, if defense comes alive, should be playoffs. Oh, my Lord. An 84 overall. Oh, we didn't get a bye week, though. 10-5-1. and one. 84 overall. Oh, with fucking MVP status. 84 overall. So the Jaguars took the division. Jesus Christ, that is insane. Team schedule. So we lost one in preseason and then won three. Uh, so we tied against the Niners. Not a great team to tie against. We didn't really dominate many great teams. Okay, we beat the shit out of the Seahawks. Ooh, we finished weak as hell, though. We should have had, what, a 10, or no, not a 10, a 14, 1-1 one one season? That would have been amazing. See the stats of Braxton Miller. That doesn't really look MVP worthy. Oh, he probably ran a lot, I bet. No? Those aren't like MVP stats. They're really good. It's just like it doesn't seem MVP worthy. Julio Jones did well. Jalen did well. Hopkins, I forgot to put him in the slot. Still did well, though. Um, offensive line played well. The defense had to come alive. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. 13 and a half for Watt. 12 for Clowney. 8 for Rankins. Picks. 4 for Bickerstaff. Ooh, that could be an award. I'm liking that. I'm, I'm really not sure how we did so. I guess 10-5-1 isn't super great. That's it's solid, just not insane. Laura Miller could be best running back. Ooh, first offensive yards. That makes sense. Defensively, what were we? Number seven. Okay, I can see why we like we probably should have done better, honestly. MVP was Braxton. Do we have anyone else? Nope. Doesn't matter to me, though. Braxton Miller with the award. Best offensive player as well. Defensive player of the year. Miles Jack was third. Offensive rookie of the year. Did we even have a rookie? Probably not. Bickerstaff didn't even come close. He was number five with four picks. Crazy. Crazy. Julio Jones wasn't even best wide out. Our, our only record's going to be quarterback stuff, which, I mean, to be fair, it's really awesome because Braxton got 81,000 XP. I don't know if I want to get him to superstar, though. Unless he already has it, then things change. Not 88 deep throwing. So he's, like, basically an RG3, like an actual beast RG3. That's so awesome. So after the XP, this is the team, 91 Braxton, 88 Lamar. Not a whole lot of upgrading for most of the players other than Braxton. Um, the offensive line almost gets to a full 80. A lot of 88s, which I like to see there. Defensively, Miles Jackson, 91. McKinley, we have a really, McKinley? McKinney, a really good linebacker core. Um, cornerbacks, like DBs in general, really lacking. A lot of youth. But can it be done? Like, I don't know where we rank against the Steelers, but we're close. I don't think we're as good, though, because the Steelers are actually a really good team. 87 to their 86. Maybe we are better because our defense, to be fair, is a lot better. And it's looking good for us. 20 to 7. 27 to 7. Fuck off. Come on, man. Top-ranked defense can't make a stop. Get the fuck out of here. Well, that, I mean, look at this. Can we, like, not suck? They went for it on fourth down. That is really stupid. Did we get the two? Oh, we went for one. Fuck sake, guys. Did we just lose? Wow. How does 47 seconds go in one play? We lost by fucking eight. Was it Braxton's fault? Kinda. Lamar did all right. He actually did better than Adrian Peterson. Where the... F oh, yeah. I forgot. Le'Veon Bell went to free agency. Josh Gordon is their star wide receiver there. Very weird league this is. Miles Jack dominated. No pressure. The backup defensive tackle. Obviously, we're in a 4-3. 
Adrian Peterson shook hands and retired. Did he retire with a ring, though? Larry Fitzgerald also retired. League schedule. Let's see. What do we got? No ring for the Peterson. Chelsea Seahawks do win. Does that mean Eddie Lacy got a ring? He did. Going to try to re-sign this young man right here. Good old Clowney. This offer is perfect. Sweet. Got Mance as well. Fedorowicz, how much is he asking for? He's not asking for a whole lot. He's been pretty well. He's been playing pretty well for us, so we'll keep him. Jack Muhort, I think, is also worth re-signing. He's good, I guess. We'll keep him. Obviously, we're going to keep Mance. And then Shazier. God damn, we have a lot of guys to re-sign. Prosh, and we'll let Jawan go and all these other crappers. Jarvis, Winton, Sheldon Richardson, Alden Smith, Jeremy Hill. It's a good one, too. You know? Sam Bradford, James White. Not a whole lot of great guys here that can make a huge difference for us. Probably just going to look to the draft for our players. Looks all right. He's very young, so I wouldn't expect his stats to prove him to be great. Hoping for a really solid draft here. I think we get a decent one. As long as we have a pick in the top 10, at least. And number two, and what is the other one? Fuck's sake, what was the other one? The 32nd pick. We had the Steelers pick. I must have just blindly traded, or the Seahawks pick. I must have blindly traded with someone and just didn't get rid of it or something. Or maybe I just didn't trade it. Either way, number two overall isn't bad, so we should be able to use that to get something. I think that's a great trade from the Vikings. Vikings move up all the way to number two to grab a middle linebacker. That guy was actually really solid, so not a bad trade at all. we got to try to get a middle pick for this guy. I think we're going to grab the free safety. Obviously, safeties aren't really hard to get necessarily, but Rayshon Stanford, please be good. 80 overall. I suppose we go number two. We took him seven. Very solid player. They're definitely trying to make a little bit of an Earl Thomas here. 21 years old. One of the best players I've ever actually seen just for his age alone. So we move up to 17 using both second rounds that we collected from the trade down at number three. So we trade our first round and reader for the first round from the Colts. Hopefully this uh, defensive end we're going to grab is solid. Oh shit, people have been taking our players. Assuming he's there, who he barely was. I want the O-lineman, we know he's a beast. Took him 17, supposed to go number 10. Very good player. Hopefully he goes to tackle well or someone else does. Let's move down two spots. Hopefully our guy is there. One more pick, please, Titans. Ooh, good. Well, I don't know if he's a good pick, but they were talking him up a lot. Grab. Oh, fuck. We have a cornerback, too. Cornerback or defensive end? It's harder to get a good cornerback, so we're going to grab this guy. Normal dab, you guys tell me. Oh, the guys that skip combine are so fucking amazing. Yeah, he's a good player, but he has normal. 21 years old. Yeah, he'd be amazing in a league where you're using him, or you know, you're using him as a starter, but... Honestly, that Bo Riddle guy doesn't do much for us. I'm debating on trading him. Henry Key, 79 overall, 73 speed, 80 excel, 87 power move, 81 block. Really good stats. What's his dev? Quick. What a fucking legend of a player. So beasty. And of course, we took the cornerback because everyone's always telling me, Skip Combine's amazing. No, they're fucking amazing. Pretty average player. So second this year, third next year, and Willie for Leonard Floyd would be great at the defensive tackle spot. Somehow they were eighth with that quarterback situation. Give him a one, three, four. I don't know what the, if that's what it's worth or not, but don't know if I showed the team at all, but this is what it's looking like. Don't know why the guards are switched, but whatever. Uh, Fedorowicz looking solid. Constanza goes back up at left tackle. Not sure how that happens. I'm going to switch this slot receiver shit. Mar Miller looking all right. I mean, the offense is looking pretty solid. Wide receiver core is helping us a little bit. Like, they're, they're the big reason. Um, DBs, not great, but where we lack on DBs, we absolutely dominate in the fucking front seven, which is absolutely insane. So hopefully we can get it done this year. At least 12 wins, I would say. And uh, Super Bowl. So we only have one first-round draft pick this year. We also have to re-sign Leonard Williams, who we just freaking got. Uh, all Jean Pierre, he's a linebacker who wants to play defensive end. I mean, at this point, we're not really looking to draft anyone for like development, but just hoping somebody we find is like really godly 
Uh, ooh, a 6'3 wide receiver. Looking special there, pal. Let's take a look at this defensive end guy. I don't know if he's actually... Is he an actual defensive end? Oh, there he is. Arnold Jean-Pierre, 24, super small. Maybe he's fast. So we have to resign Leonard Williams. We have a little bit of money. He's very expensive. Fuck's sake, man. But we don't have anyone else really to sign. We do have Kevin Johnson. That's a guy we could probably let go. Same with Benedict McKinney. Benardrick McKinney, I guess, would be his name. But he's not asking for a whole lot, so we'll have to kind of look down the road. Week 15, here we come. And jo Jose Saxon won the Heisman after dominating the conference as both a wide receiver and cornerback, or receiver and a cornerback. So what position is he going to be? Montana DB ends college career with, okay. Tyree Hamlin, Jose Saxton. Yeah, MVP. Oh, for the AFC? 11 and five, not bad, not bad. Dak Prescott apparently won MVP though. Uh, let's take a look. Team schedule, three and one in preseason. We had a rough start and then we won like five or six straight. Won five straight, lost one, won one, lost one, and then won three straight. With some really good wins. Nice. We do have a bye week as well, which is huge. Dak Prescott, apparently MVP, was... was uh, Braxton appeared to do better this year than last year. Uh, let's take a look. Do we think that he actually won it over Dak or not? Ooh, Dak definitely won it. Damn it. That sucks, man. Braxton did very well, though. Uh, Lamar did well. What about Julio? Julio Jones, really low on the list. Interesting. Interesting. What about blocking? Not bad at all. Defensively, Clowney finally overshooting Watt for sacks. Lot of good stuff this season. Uh, three for Bickerstaff, Bo Riddle. Don't know how many awards we're going to have. Definitely going to have best quarterback, though, and offensive player of the year. So it's one good thing about not being on the same side as Dak. AFC is definitely one of the better sides, I think, because... The Cowboys dominate most of the awards, usually. Fifth in offensive yards. First in defense, so technically a better year. I think last year we were first in offensive, seventh in defensive. So obviously averaging out, we did better. Number three, not bad. Braxton Miller, though, number one for the AFC side. Really good stuff. Offensive rookie of the year, Couplin. I don't even know if we had a guy. Defensive rookie of the year, CJ Trailer. Wow, that is a great last name. Braxton did well. Lamar was third. Hopkins was third. Offensive line was third plus. Defensive line third. Took so many third awards. I mean, that's... It's all right, I guess, because Braxton got more awards. Let's take a quick look at who we have to play before we go any further. Braxton's come on really strong, though. Let's take a look at this sexy squad. Looking really, really solid right now. Um, I didn't really like the wide receiver outcome, so we're just going to put that back to normal. Braxton's a 95 with his plus two from his 93 overall. Offensive line is basing out at probably like an 87-ish. Move on to the defensive side of the ball where we are number one defense in the league. You can see why those safeties are baller. The defensive line is one of the best in the league, if not the best. And then you got the DBs who have really, really come on strong after last year. I mean, our rookie free safety is an 88 overall. Bickerstaff is an 87. So really, we're just missing one other super beast corner, and we would win the Super Bowl every year, probably. We'll see if we can just win one this time, though. 92 to their 89, probably a bit higher than 92, since I don't think the XP counted yet, or the, the upgrades counted yet. Moving on to the actual game here, we're actually a home game against the Patriots. That's pretty ridiculous. Remember last year, actually, well, this year, technically, in real life, if the uh, Texans had a little bit of a quarterback, you know, Maybe the, the Patriots wouldn't have won the Super Bowl again, but that wasn't the case. It was a really easy route for the Patriots to win a Super Bowl last year, not even going to lie. As much as I hate the Patriots' success and shit, gotta call it how it is. Like, the schedule, really easy. Obviously, before the season started, that wasn't the plan, but sometimes that's how things run ravel. And then the playoffs, they had to play a Texans team that had, like, absolutely no offense. And they played the, uh, the Steelers, I believe, who, once again, absolutely no offense for some reason. I don't know what happened, but they were just like, they couldn't even score a touchdown at all. Like, they didn't score a touchdown against the Chiefs. Just horrendous. Speaking of horrendous, wow. The Patriots played really horrendous here. 
41 to 10. Absolutely locked down this defense is. Garoppolo got destroyed, basically. Braxton Miller had a really good game. Uh, Lamar Miller did all right. Uh, Lamar Miller actually had a really good season. Season? Game. He had a good season, too. Well, we can give, give him credit there, too. Hunter Williams has been a big part of our team ever since he joined us. And, I mean, that's how it is. First game is a winner. On to the AFC Championship game already. And, of course, it actually is against the Steelers. I wonder if Miller has a... Uh, contract coming up this year it'd be crazy if you let him go to free agency 94 to 88 i want like in a user league specifically how much money someone would offer to pay for him we can't be doing that and then we throw an interception the steelers are a crap team their team is shit wow wait we're down by 10 are you fucking serious? Well, that's, I mean, we're going to play one more season after this. And after that, I give up because our team is dominant. Three picks from, oh yeah, that insanely dominant Steelers defense. I forgot they have the greatest defensive backs in the fucking history of the game. Absolute dominant defense. Let, let's see who they have in there. Ooh, William Gay. Look out. Wouldn't want to throw a pick to William Gay, Artie Burns, or Cockrell. Like, get the fuck out of here. Those guys are not good. They're, like, I am sorry. The Steelers have good, like, their offense is good and shit, but let's be honest. Their defense is rather rough, especially their corners. Like, let's go take a look. They're one team away. Oh, no, 79 overall William Gay. How dare he? Like, fuck off. Like, the, like come on, really? <laughs> like, What? Sean Davis is like their best defensive back, and he was nowhere to be found in that game. So, what does that tell you? Come on, EA. Let's let's make this fair one last time. Let's let the the Steelers not destroy us again. I never understand that. I looked at the bottom of the screen, and it's like the Steelers GM says that the Steelers are going to look to target pass rush early. Aaron Rodgers retired. I honestly don't remember that. No way. That must be random. 2018 and he retired wow all right but anyways yeah i don't know why a team would do that like what? Uh, why would you say oh we're gonna do this so a team that's right next to us that wants a pass rusher might try to trade up so we don't get them because they clearly mentioned it you know some genius stuff there from the uh the pittsburgh Steelers. good job you know and he doesn't play. Yeah, we seen that. Like, oh, let me guess. The co or the quarterback's gonna go against the whole team and say that it was the coaching. Come on now, come on now. I know the coach isn't there anymore, but it's still like the head coach. It wasn't the only guy. Are you faggot? We're in 2018, 2019. The players are gonna be decent there. I think we can get them for cheaper. Just trying to fight for them though. So. I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, Kevin Johnson, not too overpriced, so we'll sign him. We'll sign him. Well, we'll not sign him. What's the tag? Just for, you know, okay. <laughs> I knew the tag was going to be a lot. I was just kind of curious. By the way, I didn't show, but we traded for Dayton Jones. It's like a fifth or a sixth round. No, nothing crazy. Uh, McKinney, not asking for a lot. Not worth it. So we're going to lose a lot of players here to free agency. But we should be able to sign them back or even someone better back. Um, it wouldn't surprise me that some of our guys are the best of their position in the um, free agency class here, but at the end of the day, we should get him back, like I said. Zach Martin, Bud Dupree. Interesting. Superstar development trade. He's developed very quickly. I don't think we need him. Running back, we have Lamar Miller. Usually I don't see guys like this in here. Oh, uh, did the AI tag our guy? Do you guys know the setting to turn that off? Because I do not want my players being auto-tagged or whatnot. I hate when the game does that. It absolutely does my head in that that's a thing. Um, Lamar Miller, what's his stats and stuff? So he's, nah, he's fine. He's fine. David Johnson's obviously better and we can get him for cheap. But even though this isn't a realistic rebuild, it's not necessary. Offensive line's fine for us. Bud Dupree, though. I don't know what kind of, like, money we could save with Merciless. But Bud Dupree is, like, merciless on crack. Oh, my God. His contract is on crack, though. I'm sorry. I cannot, cannot pay that. That is ridiculous. 
Sweet. And I mean, he's got the same progression as Kevin Johnson because even with quick development trait, Kevin Johnson just isn't going to upgrade because he's 27. So there, there's no point. So we're just looking for a number two, number three, just in case we can't find someone in the draft. Oh, there we go. Eric Hendricks. Okay. So we got both of those guys. We, we got cheaper. We definitely got cheaper. And I don't think we got worse. One left tackle away. Let's take a look at a left tackle. Costanzo. We really need to replace him. I mean... Maybe for the future, but right now, like, what is he, 29, 30? Ah, we're number nine. I think I want to trade up to seven. They don't. We're going to take our wide receiver here. I don't know what our other picks look like, but we are going to take our boy Thurman Steed. Thurman Steed, superstar development trait. Not the craziest of stats, but he's still really solid. A great pickup, so he's going to be our number three, so hopefully he wins offensive rookie of the year. Jose Saxon, I believe he has superstar development trait. Pretty solid stats. I wish his speed would be a little bit higher, though. Um, not bad, though. He's got a little bit of elusiveness. Not great blocker. Uh, superstar development trade. I believe he was one of those guys that we knew was going to have it. 79 overall. Really good stats for 22 years old. Any trucking? He doesn't really have any trucking. He's got decent juke and elusive, the, though. Uh, any injury problems? Wow, he's actually really good with that injury. What's his Devev? Devev? Him, he's not bad. He's not a bad player at all. What a steal. Like, late second, that is a steal and a half, 100%. But, that being said, so we got Proche back as well. So, we overpaid non-wantingly. I don't think that's a word, but I didn't want to, and the game was like, fuck you, faggot. Like, they were not having any of it. So, as ironic as it sounds, the Chiefs are looking for a cornerback. We're looking to take their cornerback. <laughs> Can we do it? I think we can do it for a second. But I want to keep that second for some reason. I don't know why. I just do. We're going to get rid of that second. I don't care. It's a good trade in real life. Assuming Peters holds up his value in the future. First and a second plus our 25-year-old corner, which might be older than Peters. There's a good chance that he is. By the way, just to like show you guys that... Um, like with these non-realistic ones that we're not doing everything we can to do well. 87 overall, Costanzo obviously could be replaced. $11.5 million this year. We're going to keep him on the team though because like I said, I feel this is the last season for us. I know that we don't even have a first round draft pick, but I'm so curious to see if there's any superstar beasts in the draft. Chris Harris Jr. extends his contract. Taylor Decker gets paid big time. I don't remember, did they keep... No, they did keep him. I was thinking of... Um, What's his face? Riley Reef, Sanchez Hurst. Okay, so we have a running back and we have a tight end. So let's take a look at those two. So Sanchez Hurst, 5'11", 217. Nothing spectacular. 21 years old, though. So I do like that a lot. Max Dodge, 21 as well. Wow. that's a This is a really good class just from those two guys alone. I mean, those are some steals right there. By the way, we've had to negotiate contracts. I haven't paid attention uh, I'm not really too worried about, ooh, Braxton with that contract, though. So, obviously, we would let Costanzo go. I would say we would let Whitney Merciless go at this point. Sheldon Rankins, I think we would try to get him back. How much cash do we have? So, we have about 30 mil, which is really bad. Uh, how much is Miles Jack asking for? Wow, he is asking for, like, next to nothing. What a gent. He knows his value. Holy shit. You would never let a guy like him go. So, we're going to offer him a contract. Stays on the team. That is one hell of a contract. It's funny. is We haven't even done everything that needs to be done for um, to uh, stay as cheap as we can. But we still would keep most of the team. Even, like, even after the fact. Which is kind of crazy. We are into the playoffs. And we are 14-2. I wonder with 14-2 if that is good enough for MVP again. 3-1 in preseason Patriots. Suck a dick. Um, so we were kind of on and off a little bit there. Oh, Patriots really suck at it. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this dick sucking the Patriots were forced to give to us. Great performance by Braxton. One pick, but whatever. Uh, not a great game by Lamar, though. <laughs> not not particularly great. Hopefully our, quarter, or our quarterback, our wide receiver did really well and got maybe offensive rookie of the year. Lots of wins, though, man. What is that? Two, four, five. It's an 11 win streak we have. That's rough. That's like 14 wins we need total to win the Super Bowl, I think. So we've seen Dak won MVP again. A little bit of a down year for Braxton. Not terrible, just down year. Um, Lamar Miller did really well, actually. He just had a bad game against the Patriots. Jesus, he actually had a really solid season. 
5.1. That's not bad. Uh, Steed didn't play badly, but I don't think that's enough to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. We'll find out. Uh, almost three thousand, almost four one thousand yard receivers. That would have been really awesome. Offensive line, man, that's one of the best I've ever seen. Six, eight sacks given. I mean, take we have Braxton, so he probably runs really well. Uh, what about sacks? Eighteen and a half for Watt. Fifteen for Clowney. Eight for Rankins. Six for Williams. Ten picks for Peters. Wow, definitely DB of the year, I'd say. Uh, Miles Jack is such a beast as well. Cody Parkey, not bad. This has got to be the year. We've done really well this year from just about every aspect. Um, the interceptions, other than Peters, was a little low, but overall the sacks were great. So, yeah, great sacks. Second offense, third defense. That's, I think, another improvement or at least really close. Braxton, number three, coach of the year. Us, for once, nice. Defensive rookie of the year. Watt, number two. Interesting. Offensive rookie of the year, number two for our guy. No. Uh, best quarterback, Braxton. Best running back, almost Lamar. Best wide receiver, Julio Not Offensive line, we had five of the top six, which is crazy. Considering Zach Martin shouldn't even been on this side. He just went to free agency and signed with a new team. Best linebacker, got to be best DB, 100%. There you go, Peters. So, really good season for us for XP and everything. We'll take a look at what we have. I upgraded a little bit before the um, final games. Our offensive line has a good amount, which is honestly probably the best scenario. Uh, obviously, you want your playmakers to have it, but the offensive line is huge. Not a whole lot of XP, actually, but I'm going to sim one week, see who we go against, and then upgrade our XP. You know, if you've been with us for a while, you know the traits of life. So this will be the third game of the season against the Patriots. Can we sweep that series? So this is our playoff squad looking so great. Braxton's a 97. I don't really know if that upgraded, but our offensive line averaging about a 90, I would say. You know, you add up the 91, 92 on the Costanza. That's about a 91 there. So about an, a 90, I would say, easily. Um, wide receiver score. Core is looking pretty solid. Dorwitz, 90. Lamar Miller, 90. They're both, you know, they just haven't upgraded well. Um, defensively. Could do a little bit better than the linebacker core. Miles Jack is really holding up the squad. Shazier is really good too. But Whitney Merciless, 88 overall. Eric Kendricks, 82. Not great to be honest. But uh, defensive line, super great. And then DB core, a lot better than it started. Training for Peters was huge. He had a great season for us. Then Stanford is one of the best rookies I've ever had. Um, just for the sense of his age. You know, that's the big thing is age, I think. It could be years played, but look at how young he is. He's 22 Going on to his 23-year season, you know, year 23 of his age, obviously. 92 overall already. Looking so good. I mean, just super Earl Thomas-like, which is really cool. Pretty damn good. 95 to their 90. So, we did end up with a really awesome roster. Going to go against these Patriots. This is the reason why I said this was going to be the last year. Because I knew this team would get to this point. Um, obviously, the contracts are a little bit of an issue, but I knew this team would get to this point, and if we don't win, it's just BS, BS Sim. The better team should win, especially when it's this much better. Every game here should be a 20-point win for us, every single game. Not even a question. Even if we play the Steelers, I think it should be a 20-pointer. Uh, a I mean, it's pretty over, but it's not over. Look, at, I mean, like I said, this is this is exactly what I was expecting. This offense is too good. The defense is too good. We're just overwhelming like we're just blazing down the field one of our players if that was all one player this game that player is gonna break a record i know it's postseason but still they're gonna break a record 100 percent like that is ridiculous braxton probably threw for 400 47 to 14 it's exactly what i was hoping 400 plus um what was the longest of the game 76 not bad uh no picks which is really surprising rushing uh Deion lewis did better but he did fumble and it was Hopkins with the huge game. Sweet, sweet stuff. Uh, really big game. Holy crap. Um, sacks. We got J.J. Watt with two. Rankins with a one and a half. Clowney with a one and a half. Going against the Jaguars. I don't remember. I think we did win to them. I think the last playoff game we had before this year was against them in the wild card. So I think we did beat them. I mean, if we can beat the Patriots that well when they have that kind of EA cheese sim we should be able to destroy them here. Uh, the, I mean, the way our team is built, it's basically if your defense can't hold us, it's over. 
I know we're not playing well in this game, but our defense is so locked down. The offense is really solid. You know, like I said, not the most impressive game um, before the third quarter. At least third quarter, we're looking actually pretty strong. And turnover right at the right at their own end zone. And like, look at this. Like, just the defense is really the highlight. As much as I'm pumping up this offense, the defense is where it's been at. Like, look at that, man. Absolutely insane. The defense is. I would say the defense has got to be our stronger suit, even though statistically or points. No, nah, I think we are. It's it's because of the offensive line. We have a great offensive line, but it's not as good as our defensive line. Not even in the slightest. Two picks from Bortles. Finally, we see some interceptions. Lamar Miller goes over five. Hopkins doesn't have quite an impressive game. It's still good. Still good, nonetheless. Sacks, about average. Uh, picks, the two safeties. Good shit, guys. Good stuff. And they are an 84. 95 to their 84. We rank them, outrank them by 11 points. 11 points. That's pretty crazy. Uh, oh, third and eight. A huge penalty on the offense. And we go nowhere. Kick the field goal. Make it a two possession game. The Seahawks haven't been given up easily, though. First and 10. Uh, third and four. A huge sack by Clowney. He's got a huge sack. Punt to the one. What a play. But we do get out of it, so no, they still have a chance. I can't believe the Seahawks' resilience. And that is most likely going to be game. If we score a touchdown, it's over. The game is over. Yep, it's over. Pick by someone. Super Bowl for the Texans, 30-13. to Our toughest game of the playoffs, despite the fact that it was the easiest matchup we've had. We finally knocked those Seahawks off of their pedestal that the league has been giving them in this franchise and pretty much every other franchise. It's always Patriots, Seahawks, Steelers, Cowboys. And uh, I can't believe Rodgers retired so soon, though. Like, I don't pay attention too much to him, but does he really retire that soon and rebuild? Like, fuck's sake, man. That is so, like, that's crazy. But anyways, that uh, that's a Super Bowl. That, I mean, who won it? I would assume it was Miles Jack. What kind of performance? Two picks and a six sack. It obviously deserves it. One of the best players we've had. Um, we usually develop them decently, maybe 89, 90, but 95 to 97-ish overall, he has been insane. Like, could you imagine? Like, 23, 24 years old having that good of an overall? He is great. They have all the right people at the podium, I would think. And uh, actually, Hopkins deserves to be up there other over Julio. And it's game-based, but overall, Hopkins has been the better wide receiver as of late down the stretch here julio jones has been all right but can you speaking of julio jones do you remember when he had dreads like looking back what a decision good good decision cutting those bitches off they cut them off they aren't the same player which is really weird but it is uh receiver okay so julio jones i mean he was better this game so fair enough i'll allow it uh sacks clowny two picks wagner had two clutch kicking for both teams again um we have left. I'll try to find that while looking at this. So we didn't have a wild card game. We had one game here against the Patriots. Absolute dominance, though. Uh, Postseason conference. We only had one there. And then we had the Super Bowl, which we didn't do anything of. So um, the next four of the four uh, fantasy style rebuilds we have: the Patriots, Jags, Giants, Redskins. I think every team but the Redskins would be like a two-season rebuild. Like We'd easily get to the Super Bowl and win it by then. Um, but, of course, the more important question, which is um, which team should be next for realistic? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to upload this Saturday for one, but if this video, once again, I'm going to keep that, keep that going. 500 likes on any of the rebuilds coming up, and we'll uh, do two a week for, I mean, the foreseeable future, I suppose. Maybe even realistic two per week. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, I would assume the next team is either being the Browns or the Colts. I'm assuming we just did the Bears. I think we did, do we? Browns or Colts are next. And then for fantasy style, if I was going to guess voting-wise, I would say Giants. If I'm going to guess me-wise, I think Redskins because we just did the Texans, which are a decently good team. So I think Redskins would be next or Giants. So Redskins or Giants are next, I would assume. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know what you thought of it. And uh, give me suggestions for videos in the future. Maybe like a what if in Madden, a different series in Madden, a different game perhaps. Like a game you'd like to see potentially. Um, I don't know. Just let me know. I'm always looking for feedback. You guys know I like to respond to as many people as I can. 
and I usually follow through with it. Maybe a little late, but I mean, I usually do within 20 some hours. <laughs> That's impressive, right? But anyways, hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya.